Hey, this is Mr. Field. I'm going to give you an introduction to algebra tiles today. We're going to use these a lot throughout the year to help us represent different algebraic expressions and equations. But these are really useful all the way up through uh, late algebra one as far as representing everything that we'll be doing from then on. And they'll really help most students get a good understanding of algebraic concepts that gave us adults so much trouble back in the day. Now what we have is three different algebra tiles. They're colored on one side and they're red on the other. They're each red on the other side to indicate negative numbers. We're going to start with the little yellow square. Now all this is based on an area model. So if we look at the area of this square, we're going to agree that the length of this square is one unit long. And since it's a square, that means that the width of it is also one unit long. And we all remember from years ago that the area of a square is just like the area of a rectangle. It's length times width. In this case, we have a square with an area of 1. So from now on, we're going to use this little yellow square to represent 1. And, as I said earlier, a red one will be negative 1. Okay? Now we're going to pull out the little green rectangle. Notice that it has the same width as the square. It is one unit wide. However, if we try to measure the length of it, we'll find that we really can't come up with a good answer for how long it is. It's, uh, it doesn't line up perfectly like that. Uh, and so what we find is we don't really know the length of this. And so we can imagine this green rectangle as sort of a magic box that contains an unknown number. Could be a million, could be zero, could be three, we don't know. But we're going to call this length x, which is usually what we use in mathematics to represent an unknown number. So we have a rectangle here with an area of x times 1, length times width, and that is x. So from now on, this green rectangle is x. And, as you might have imagined, this, whatever x is, is the opposite of it. We call that negative x. So it doesn't matter if x is a million, this is negative a million. It doesn't matter if x is 3, this is negative 3. It doesn't matter if x is 0, this is negative, well, 0 is its own opposite, so this is also 0. So whatever x is, this is going to represent the opposite of it. Okay? Now, we have another piece here that we won't use at all in seventh grade math. But if you'll notice, this square is x units long on one side and x units long on the other side. And x times x is x to the second power, or x squared. We also have negative x squared. We're not going to use either one of those in any of the upcoming videos. These come much later uh, as we start factoring and multiplying with polynomials and binomials in algebra. Okay, so these are gone. Now, what we can use, and this is very useful for middle schoolers, what we have here is 1 plus negative 1. Now, we should have already learned in sixth grade and years before that any number plus its opposite is zero. We can look at this on a number line and see if we have negative one and we add one, that means we go to the right one space and one space to the right of negative one is zero. So let's all just agree for now that one plus negative one is zero and we're going to call a little yellow and red pair like this from now on a zero pair. And there are several ways to show zero. This is zero. It's just two plus negative two. This is zero. This is three plus negative three. And even with our x's we can show zeros. Any number plus its opposite, these are zero pairs. That's important for us later because anytime we add or subtract zero from something it stays the same. So that's the beginning of the algebra tiles and zero pairs. <laughs>